Hey everybody, it's Professor Guts here, and I want to talk to you a little bit about a little movie called Rotting in the Sun. Now this is a recent movie that just came out this year, and it's directed by Sebastian Silva, and oh, I would like to, I can sum it up in one sentence. Uncut gems for the depressed grinder crowd. Because this movie is, let's just say, it is equally funny as it is tense. Now, I wouldn't, I would actually compare the suspense to something like, um, in particular, two scenes from two separate Hitchcock movies, Frenzy and Psycho. Now, um, what I'm what I'm referring to is, um, in particular, in Psycho, when it's right after when Bates' uh, mother murders our supposed main character, and Norman has to cover <laughs> cover it cover the crime up, and it's actually a rather intent, rather very suspenseful scene, and you're like, oh, like you actually kind of worry about if he if he if he's gonna get away with it or not. Uh, in particular, like just putting away the car and um, essentially sinking it to the bottom of this, like what looks like a swamp area. And then with the movie Frenzy, there's a scene in which a serial killer murders a woman and her body is in the back of this pickup truck. And while the pickup truck is going away, he remembers that, um, like there's a ring on her finger that would actually connect him to the crime. So there's this suspenseful scene of him just trying to get rid of the evidence before um, before it's too late. And what the what rotting in the sun basically is is essentially imagine that, but imagine no scenes, but stretch them out to an hour, and it is really funny and also just you're just going oh god oh god is she, is she gonna get away with this like in it is edge of your seat suspense in you're thinking wait why did you mention grinder well <laughs> you, well you see there's a lot of uh, gex in the movie aka gay sex because this movie is centered around, um, well, it's actually, I would say more of, it's a satire on, um, about how shallow the hooking up scene is for, uh, in the gay community. And also how shallow influencers are and just internet culture in general of how shallow and meaningless it is. Which, oh, I personally hurt Sebastian Silva, but, but I get it. Because, well, it, it's done in a very clever way, but it's never waving its finger at this, at, at this type of behavior. But it's also showing just kind of like how meaningless it all is without ever pandering to the audience about it. And also, also the graphic sexual. When I say graphic sex scenes, as in, like, oh, they're not faked. They're on. They're on screen. <laughs> like you're like, oh, that. Yep, that. Yep, that's actual penetration there. Hmm. But it's but how it's filmed. It's never filmed in a. Oh, this is erotic. This is supposed to be arousing. It's kind of in a. It's like, eh, it's happening in the background now. I'm just, you know, eh, it's, it is what it is. It's part of life. Eh. Unless it doesn't help, it kind of feels uh, very sleazy. So you're just, that, um, like, I don't see how people can actually get aroused from watching it. Despite, well, how graphic it is. Plus, it doesn't help that the sex scenes themselves are like, Five, ten seconds, and that's about it. Thank you. 
and it never has any like close-ups that you would see in let me say pornography that you would normally see and you're thinking well is this movie categorized as porn well no because here's the thing there's a, several movies like this where where it pretty much intermingles actual let me say hardcore sex and actual art like you've got movies like in the realm of the senses short bus uh when was it Lars von Tears, um nymphomaniac you also got pretty much almost the entire filmography of uh, gosper noah you know like let me say love or uh, what was that movie called into the void which you think which technically kind of censors it, but you can tell that, oh no, those scenes are not faked <laughs> in any way. And those are the ones I can name on top of my head. Oh, and there's, um, goodness, what was that one French movie called? No, it's not French, um, Stranger by the Lake. That one, too. Both, like, you can't say it's arousing, but I don't think it is. And also, it just further hammers home the satire of, like I said, how shallow the, like, hooking up seeing it, how hooking up is in the gay community, because, like, even, which I have personal experience with, because I'm bisexual, but, um, because you would, let me say, go on to Grindr, you, if you're looking for a relationship, that's a horrible idea, or even a friendship because you really just you're not making any actual emotional um, connections and you can see that through through this film which um, when I saw that Sebastian Silva was going to be in the movie himself and directing it and now there's going to be these type of scenes and I was worried that he was going to use that as an excuse to actually hook up with the actors because look I'm used to that in films where you would see someone involved, let me say, behind the scenes, and they, let me say, that they would write themselves in the movie having a sex scene or something. Like, I think a good example of this is, which, this one's kind of far back, but uh, my, the My Bloody Valentine remake, where you see this crap, well, I wouldn't, well, I mean, it's a fake sex scene on, like, this movie, but, um, there was a rather graphic sex scene in it that involves one of the victims and the writer of the movie who is only in this one scene. <laughs> and like I said, with Rotting in the Sun, Sebastian Silva is not involved besides recording it and just being indifferent to what's going on around him. Which does travel which i don't want to spoil the movie for right now i'm gonna get into that later but it's also very similar to psycho and in another way well and i'm not referring to that there's a psychotic killer no there isn't and the plot's not revolving around that but i'll get to that later but but i was surprised by um Jordan Firstman's in this, who is a Instagram influencer, and he was actually surprisingly really good in it. I was genuinely surprised. Like, I never knew who he was until this movie, and I was kind of shocked. Because I'm used to, let me say, people that are influencers, whenever they're featured in the movie, they are the absolute worst aspects of that particular movie or TV show. But the, the main performance that I'm more worried, that, not worried, I meant to say, um, that I was more impressed by is Catalina Sabadera, which I may probably mispronounce, but um, she plays Senora Vero, um, who is the, essentially the maid, aka the Nana, in the movie. And let's just say it is one of those Ooh, it is one it's a tour de, de force performance like it's which I know it won't get nominated for any awards because look I highly doubt the Academy Awards or it's 
ever going to nominate something like this, even though this is probably one of the best movies of the year. And I love this movie. And but uh, if if we lived in a perfect world, she would be considered for it. And then again, the Academy Awards are not. Let's just say they're kind of meaningless. But oh eh, well, let's just say. She deserves a lot of awards for this movie. Now, um, I also do love the aspect of how the language barrier is like plays a part in this, where which is actually a plot point. Now, Jordan Firstman in this movie does not speak a lick of Spanish. Like he only speaks a little bit, like essentially what an average American learns and. In, a, in high school, which is usually just, how do I get to the airport? Or, hey, hello, how are you doing? And that, you know, roughly about that. And he's trying to communicate with Nana, who doesn't speak any English. And they're trying to use a app on his phone that will translate English to Spanish, you know, and vice versa. And this is a plot point is actually both very suspenseful and actually really kind of funny. <laughs> now, I highly recommend the movie. And it's available on MUBI. M-U-B-I. Which is my... Probably becoming my new favorite streaming service. Like that and Criterion Channel are like the two big ones for me. Now... I'm going to go into spoilers here, so if you haven't seen this movie, go check it out, and you're not going to regret it. It's one of the best of the year. Okay. Now on to spoilers. Now, Sebastian Silva is very, when I say his character is suppressed, like it's all set up for when he's, un, when he's unintentionally killed by the Nana. When they're moving a couch and he gets knocked off the roof by an accident. And I love how it plays through like, oh yeah, he's writing in his journal how he wants to flatline himself by using do um, dog poison. And uh, even his uh, like landlord is like, I would say, yeah... It can be interpreted as, as encouraging him on, or he thinks he's joking around. And so he's joking along with him about it. And you're saying he writes it down in his diary and even has f recorded messages on his phone about it. And then when Sebastian Silva is killed, and the Nana is trying to cover it up, and it leads to various rather intense sequences. So you're just like, Oh, like, because there's multiple people coming into this apartment, and she's trying to make sure that no one finds the body. And, like, when I say multiple people, as in Jordan Firstman, well, he's supposed to be making a TV, TV, or TV show or a movie project with Sebastian Silva, but, and he was supposed to meet him at Sebastian's apartment. And what I particularly love is that um, that Jordan Firstman is immediately suspicious that one he's not there, and Sebastian's phone and wallet and diary are there. And so he starts, and when I say interrogating, like more of questioning um, Nana through what I previously mentioned, the translating app. And. Like, and it kind of translates a little well when it's only, like, a sentence or two. But when it gets to, let me say, more than that, it becomes almost gibberish. <laughs> and that plays a part in the ending, which I think is possibly one of the funniest and most tragic endings of the year. In which, um, let's just say, uh, which I will get to. But I do love how the, how eventually that... That when Jordan's like, okay, I'm going to be calling, the, like, he's just updating his followers, like, hey, do you know where Sebastian is? And he start actually take, 
being serious for once in his life instead of this fake personality that he gives up being this super positive guy. And he's actually being a real human being that's concerned for, his, for this person's safety. And that his followers immediately go, Oh, man, I love this new character bit that you're doing. It, like, they don't take him seriously. <laughs> and, that he kind, and he gains more, more followers through this. And it kind of shows kind of how the internet go. kind of goes, Oh, hold on, my cat is uh, about to get on here. Get on, my, get on my chair. Here, let me show you. Hey, little buddy. How you doing, huh? Aww. He's such a good little buddy. No, anyways, uh, um, what was I getting about? Okay, now I remember. Now the one of the best moments is like when he's like starting to realize how empty and shallow his life is. Big, well, after he reads Sebastian Silva's journal, which is filled with just him hating Jordan completely. For what he is as an influencer. And there's even, con like, I remember earlier in the movie when Sebastian's like, that directors are not considered important anymore. That, like, he was like, hey, what? He's like, naming the last movie that Scorsese did. And no one has an answer for him. And yet, he's like, and yep, influencers, everybody knows who they are. Which I'm like, I think that's like the only time in the movie I'm like, okay, he's starting to wag his little finger at, at internet culture, but it's not that bad in comparison to other movies that are about the internet in a way, but that's not the entire main focus of the movie, that's just part of it. But, which is funny, is that that's also how HBO picks up his... TV show when all of his other ideas are deemed um, like ah oh, nah we don't have the budget for that but then when he's like oh I Sebastian's like oh but I also got um Jordan Firstman he wants to do a show he's like oh they're all on board with it immediately but even though it's a horrible horrible idea for a TV show curb your enthusiasm but positive <laughs> then what's the point the point of the show <laughs> now um now let's go back let's rewind the clock here how i mentioned about covering up the body and there is a humorous scene in which um with Sonata and her i believe it was her brother are trying to move the body out of the apartment however when they're you know get, you know dragging this thing down the stairs they hear the entrance door open and they hear Jordan Firstman and his friends coming in. And so they drag the body body back to the roof. And eventually like, oh God, we just, we can't hide it in up here. We, let's get it on top of this um, particular spot above the entrance of the roof. Like the, like the door for the roof. So that's what they do where he's essentially, the body is now just rock, you know, lying there for the rest of the entire movie. There's even a vulture that starts Picking at it. It's both kind of but very darkly funny. <laughs> and then eventually when um like okay, Sebastian's been missing for days, they're finally gonna call the police. The apartment uh, landlord has this realization of, oh god, what if he did kill himself like off himself? Like, oh no, oh no! I gotta, I gotta cover up anything that that can indicate, like, Im that could imply that I might have led him on to to flatline himself. So, so he gets, well, he takes away the journal and the and the guy's phone. So I'm like, oh, now not only do you have one person trying to cover, like, trying to hide. The body of this person but also you got one person unknowingly covering up like it's not, like who doesn't know that sebastian is like dead on the roof that he's just trying to cover up evidence so essentially two different people covering up evidence without knowing each really 
both of their intentions and mo you know and actions. Really good, love it. And then the final scene in the movie, in which you see Nana just overcome with the guilt and sorrow, and also she's being fired from her job, and she feels guilt because now, now she knows that. Um, that there won't be closure for Silva's family. Well, or at least for now. Because police believe that he went missing and might have, um, you know, flatlined himself. I'm using that term because YouTube does not like um, talking about those type of things. But anyways, she perfect like she she meets Jordan Firstman outside and well, tries to talk to him and you know uses his phone to translate like telling her telling him what happened in one long go and then when he finally um, presses the play button you know that translate um, what she said into English and turns to utter utter gibberish and it is I could not stop laughing <laughs> That she's trying to, you know, like to confess, but she can't. <laughs> it is like so tragic and really, really funny. I couldn't stop laughing for a good five minutes. And like, I know it's probably Sebastian Silva's best movie since well his movie no, his 2009 movie that stars that same actress called La Nana or aka um, The Maid and I'm like Oz Al over to bite me so I highly recommend this movie check it out 